Sense of history from. Where did you get that sense of history from? Was it in Kansas or, I mean, coming in or? Um, well, I guess you could say I learned to appreciate the history when I got here, but, you know, I understood what history and what tradition was all about at Kansas. And, you know, what better franchise to play for than the Balls of Central when you talk about history and tradition? I was able to get a taste of that at Kansas, and I, and I know what that felt like. And then to get it at the ultimate level of the NBA, it, it was just it meant so much more. And 
like I said, I want to be a part of. Paul, do you still think of the irony of being from L.A., being a fan of Showtime Lakers, probably hating the Celtics as a kid, and now being one of the more beloved Celtics in history? Does that, you still think of that? Man, I was just talking to somebody about that this morning. You know, just a kid from L.A. grew up walking distance from the farm where, you know, a lot of the battles between the Lakers and the Celtics went on. And then to not like the Celtics and then to play for the Celtics and then win a, champ win a championship <laughs> against the Lakers, I mean, it's like, it's, it's, it's probably as ironic as it going to get yeah. <laughs> as far as a, as, a, as a career and the way it went down. So, you know, it, it, it's it's crazy how some things work in your life. And, you know, when, you get, when I get picked, 10th pick by the Celtics, a team that I didn't even have on my radar, mm -hmm. you know, you just knew it, it was for a reason. You know, and that's something my family talked about the draft day. You know, when I got picked, it was like, you know, you're here for a reason. And now, now I'm starting to like, as 19 years pass, you're starting to figure out that reason of why you got picked there. Oh, is, is this particular appearance sort of derived from that this is a dream, this is a rest Oh, definitely. I mean, it just, I know when I, when I step foot in that garden that this is the last time as a player, it just, you know, it's just going to remind me, you know, this is, this is not, this is it for me. This is sort of like, my goodbye, you know, this stop right here in Boston, you know, Kobe had like a whole all year, being in every arena, you know, this is just like my right here, I feel like, you know, this is like my goodbye when I'm coming to the building, when I'm coming to the uh, TV garden tomorrow, this is my, you know, one arena where it's like really saying goodbye to the game, knowing that this is my last season, you know, so. It's a little different from other players. Some players walk away quietly. You don't know when they retire. You know, Kobe announced before the year. I announced before the year. And it's just like, this is going to be my farewell. And that's how I'm going to do it. Have you mapped out how it's going to play out tomorrow? Like, if you run through your mind, you know, the people you'll see and the, the fan reaction, just all that, just how it's going to play out, even on the floor? Um, uh, I, 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 I really don't know. I mean, you know, I really don't know. Uh, I know one thing. I want to give one. I want to give Lucky one last kiss. <laughs> you know, I, I, that, that's one thing I know I want to do. You know, I'm probably going to have to go give Lucky one last kiss. Well, How it? that you grow up with, a close friend that you grow up with, when you share a story with somebody, it's like a confirmation, you know, when you go back. You know, guys like the equipment manager, you know, they can share your story with uh, new people who come in. You know, and that's the value of having people who's been there and seen it all, you know, especially in one franchise. And it's just like your story never gets forgotten. It carries on. So, you know, hopefully my story and my history with the Boston Celtics just can be carried on. The behind the scenes stuff, you know, the stuff that people don't see. A lot of people see the stuff that happens on the court. But, you know, with the workers and the ball boys and equipment managers, they see the stuff behind the scenes. And they, they give you a different perspective on things that other people can't give you. And, that, and that's the stuff that you value, the other stuff. You know, the, the call parents getting to the gym at 3 o'clock or 7 o'clock games. You know, Paul going to the gym at night, uh, 10 o'clock after a loss. You know, that's the stuff you're going to see that the people who've been around who've been in that, in that position can, uh, can give that type of story that a lot of people don't get a chance to see. And, and I have value in those people. You bring all your family out. What's your family? What's it been like for your wife, your daughter, your son, and have you with you? You know, I didn't bring my, my kids out. I brought my wife. 
kids probably won't remember a lot of the time I spent here because they were young. My son, he was just born in my last year. Um, you know, I, I, I'm eventually going to win him out. Hopefully, I'm going to try to do something. You know, I think, you know, with my wife, you know, she's going to win. You know, she was here for the championship. And every time she got better, she just won a couple months before we won. She was two months here, so two, two months old. So, uh, I just thought I'd bring her out and we can go to some of the restaurants, see some of the people that we knew uh, when we lived here and kind of enjoy it that way. You know, I don't, I don't want to be sticking in with the kids all the time. And so that's why I'm just like, hey, you know. Um, got babies here? No, I mean, they're just young. They're just young. Man. They're just young. You know, they probably, they, they, they don't, they're not used to this cold. <laughs> Paul, have you this is coming. Paul, have you discussed with Danny any uh, positions with the Celtics after you retire? Would you come back here and work? You know, if it was an opportunity like that, I definitely something I would consider. And, you know, me and Danny uh, stay in contact. And so, uh, you know, just being a part of this franchise for so long. The opportunity presents itself. Maybe I, I think I will consider. How um, difficult would it be to give up the warm weather and come back up? That would be kind of difficult. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I lived in cold weather a lot longer than uh, warm weather. I mean, if you consider 15 years I spent here, uh, one in New York. Three in Kansas. That's already 20 years of my 30 years. Uh, Washington. <laughs> so I probably I lived in the snow a lot more than I lived in the snow. You remember your first game? What's that? Do you remember your first game? Yeah. You know, somebody just reminded me, uh, and I don't know if this is true. Maybe you guys can tell me it's true. But uh, I guess you know, 99. Got drafted in 98, we played the first game in 99. Uh, and somebody told me that first game was February 5th in the Garden. So I, I'm not even sure if it's true. Somebody texted me that, and, and, and for me to be coming here for a February 5th game, for my last game in the Garden, that, that's pretty ironic. So I, I'm not really sure if it's true, but somebody texted me that like about an hour ago. Is that true, Forsberg? It is. True, yeah. it is. See, I just found that out. That's that's. See how things work. <laughs> it's unbelievable. Are you gonna be distracted at all, like Patriots? I probably will be distracted. I'll probably be asking, being a lot more asking what the score is. I think we, the game won't start until our game ends, though. But we'll be on the flight. You can't uh, lobby to get Doc to let you watch that game. I mean, I, I wish we could just stay here and watch the game, and then fly out. We were, we were in the air last year for the Super Bowl, but you know, yeah, this is a huge game. I mean, yeah, I mean it's the Patriots. <laughs> oh, man, I'm pumped up for that game. That's going to be a good game. That's going to be a good game. I mean, this city is gearing up. I already see the city gearing up. I see the flags on top of the, the four seasons, the Patriots flags. Oh, man, they're everywhere. You ready? I'll see. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Do you feel proud of what you helped build, kind of like with the trade to Brooklyn, and they've been able to assemble this roster? Hey, that's my way of leaving and giving back. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't intentional. I mean, I wish I could have still been here. Uh, but if I'm going to leave, at least I, I did something to help the franchise. I gave some value by leaving. <laughs> Paul, has it been a difficult year not being able to play as much as you'd like? Um, yeah, it's been difficult. I mean, especially me being a competitor and wanting to be out there and, you know, just feed my competitive juices. Uh, but, you know, I've taken on a different role, and, you know, in the locker room and, you know, being a leader to these, these younger guys and helping them understand what it's, what it's going to take for us to get to that next level, and I understand that. And so uh, it's been comfortable, you know. I've been, I've come at, to peace with it. You know, I still come to the gym early, uh, like, like if I, as if I'm, I'm a rookie, I still get here early. I mean, everybody can tell you that. 
So, uh, you know, but I've accepted my role and I understand what my role is for the franchise. And, you know, who knows? Maybe, you know, I'll get one last shot, maybe in a playoff setting, yeah. uh, to maybe do something special. Thanks, That's thanks, it. Man. Thank you, Paul. Uh,